Hey everybody, I wanna give you three quick things you can do right now to make the most of this gathering, of this experience online together. Number one, I want you to share this video. Whatever platform you might be watching on, Facebook, YouTube, Church Online, depending on what church you go to, you're on one of those platforms. And right now I would ask you, before we jump into the gathering, please share this post. Let other people know, your friends, people that know you on social media, know what you're doing because that's the best way to invite them in and let them know you can join in from your home. Please be a part of what's happening. So number one, please share this post right now. Number two, I want you to subscribe. Uh, if you go to your church's YouTube page, you can always press the subscribe button. And subscribing really means I'm all in and I want you to let me know anytime you put up new content because there's stuff happening throughout the week at all the churches in our wonderful church network and I wanna make sure you don't miss it. So please go to your church's YouTube page, press subscribe and be in the know anytime something happens on that platform. And number three, I want you to post about it. Please make a post today or this week letting people know that you watch this content, that you found it valuable. So more people can come and find it later and rewatch a message or listen to some music or whatever that happens to be. If it was meaningful to you, please post about it so other people can come and find it. Let's jump into service in just a few minutes.
as we prepare for our gathering today, I wanted to share with you an encouragement that just because plans may have changed, it doesn't mean that your dreams have to change. These are unprecedented times, but unprecedented times call for out-of-the-box leaders. And at the Eastlake Leadership College, we remain committed to training the next generation of leaders who want to find their passion and serve their community and earn their degree. We would love to start the conversation with you. You can email me, amanda at eastlake.college, or go online and check out our programs, eastlake.college. And if you know someone who has a student who could use this information, we would love for you to share it out just like we share our gatherings. Every student, high school and middle school, can still be growing in their faith during this season. That's why we've launched something called Students United, and it's all on YouTube. So go on YouTube, type in Students United, and subscribe to our channel. On the channel, you will find new content every single week for middle school and high school. The content is jam-packed full of amazing sermons, engaging games, and fun hosts. Middle school is on Saturday nights, high school is on Wednesday nights, and I cannot wait to see you there this week. Born to be wild, born to be free. I'll always be here as long as you're standing right next to me. Adventure will take us into the unknown. Look straight ahead, cause forward's the only way to go Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe it's something special It's something special Oh, and I know what's the best, it could be nothing to question Oh, when we come together We want to make sure you are aware of all the great things we have going on across our church network. The two best ways to do that are by checking out our website and also following us along on our social media pages, Facebook and Instagram. On those pages, you'll find out everything from events, activities, outreach opportunities, and so much more. We hope you enjoy the service. Here with the squad 
Hey everyone, I want to invite you to check out Kids United. Kids United is an online service experience for you and everyone in your family. Kids United is a place where you can have fun and it's also a place where you can learn more about God and connect with your family during the weekend. Make sure that you look for us in YouTube. Our channel is Kids United. Subscribe and check out the new content that comes out every Saturday at 10 a.m. I will see you there. This is where I wanna stay. Nah, nah, nah. I could do this every day. Nah, nah, nah. It don't matter what they say. Nah, 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 so hey, I've been on the wave. It's a party, make the toast. It's a party every day. So anywhere you go, all across the coast, we do it every time. Like nah, 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 nah. I got nothing but the highlights. Can't believe that this is my life. I'm only living on the bright side. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. This is where I wanna be. Nah, nah, nah. Never ever gonna leave. Nah, nah, nah. You ain't gonna get it from me. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. This is where I wanna stay. Nah, nah, nah. I could do this every day. Nah, nah, nah. It don't matter. Glad you're with us today. If you haven't met me yet, my name is Dave. I'm one of the leaders here at Venice Church, and this is my good friend, Phil. Hey friends, how you doing? We are super stoked to be with you guys here today. Yeah, we are, it's really exciting. We're going into week three of our series with Stronger Together. Pastor Mark's gonna bring a great message today, and Phil and I have some fun information that we're gonna put out to you guys a little bit later. But first, what we wanna do is join the rest of our worship teams in the network to sing a special song called Together which is a very, very important and very relevant song for what we've been going through over these last several months. All right, now with that being said, being stronger together, I wanna to share a verse with you guys and then we can jump in. So this is Matthew 18, 20. For where there are two or three gathered together as my followers, I am amongst them. All right, let's do this. This is for the busted hearts. This is for the question marks. This is for the outcast soul lost control. No one knows. Sing it for the can't go back. Sing it for the broken past. Sing it for the just found out life is now upside down. If you're looking for hope tonight, raise your hand. For the loved in vain, overcame, it's not too late. If you're looking for hope tonight, raise your hand. If you're feeling alone and don't understand. If you're fighting in the fight of your life, then stand. We're gonna make it through this hand in hand.
our differences. Together we are bolder, braver, stronger. Hey, before we get into today's message, I want to give you a heads up on what you can expect next week. So we've got a special uh, message from our lead location pastor over the entire network, that's James Grogan, and he's going to tackle this very unemotional topic regarding politics. So we were, we were talking about it this week, and uh, I can't wait for him to deliver this. It's, it's, I'm in such agreement with where his heart's on this, and really he's answering the question, how do we as Jesus people respond in such a politicized culture that we find ourselves in right now? How are we supposed to act? How are we supposed to behave? What, how are we to live out our faith in a political culture? So that's next Sunday. Be ready for that message. All right, we are in our series with Stronger Together, and we are in week three right now. Okay, this week we are wrapping up our service portion of this series. We're going to talk about uh, three weeks on service and then three weeks on prayer, three weeks on generosity. Uh, This is our third week in the service portion, and we've been looking at the book of Nehemiah. It's a small book in the Old Testament. So let me give you just a recap. Nehemiah is getting ready to, he's trying to rebuild his holy city of Jerusalem. 141 years earlier, Uh, It had been destroyed by the same empire that he is now in, Persia. And he is a cupbearer to the king in Persia. And so he had known that uh, a couple different groups of exiles had made their way back to Jerusalem. And he had gotten the report that it was in ruins. The walls were down, they were vulnerable, and the people were uh, disheartened, to say the least. So he decided to approach the king. You remember that a couple of weeks ago we talked about that. He took his own life, you know, it, it put it at risk, and he approached the king and he asked for a favor to go back and help with the rebuilding of Jerusalem. And the king gave him great favor. He gave him the resources. He gave him a guard to accompany him. And so Nehemiah went back, right? And when he got back there, he, he uh, surveyed the land. He looked at what was going on. He saw what was happening, what was in disarray. He began to pray and spent time in prayer. And then he gathered all the leaders and the, the nobles of Jerusalem that were there. And he gave them a speech about rebuilding Jerusalem. I mean, this is a brave heart speech. It was an epic speech. You can read it. And, uh, and they rallied together. They're all saying, yes, we are with you. We are one with you. Let's do this together. And so they set about trying to do this. And when they did, this is what happens. When they did, the, the neighboring lands, the neighboring tribes, the, the nations, the leaders of those, nation, those nations began to come against them. You see, they liked Jerusalem in ruins because it posed no threat to them. And so that's where we find ourselves, right there. If you are a leader in any capacity, you know this. Anytime you step up to bring change, change to your personal life, change to the lives of others, you can be a leader in your home, in your business, in a ministry, whatever. When you step up to bring change, you will face opposition. And so what I want to look at today for a few minutes is uh, how we learn from what Nehemiah went through and what do we do as we face opposition and more importantly, as we overcome opposition. So I want to look at a a couple things. Number one is the tactics of opposition. You got an outline, you can write this in. I'm going to mention just three. There's so many more, but Nehemiah and the people of Jerusalem face these three. And the first one, again, this this relates to any one of us who is stepping up to bring change in an area, to build something. Again, that could be your personal life, a career, a marriage, your children, whatever it is. Here's, here's the first tactic of those who are in opposition to you. First one is ridicule. Ridicule. This is just a mock to make fun of. This is what Nehemiah's enemies did to him and what so many people still do today. It's when you use ridicule, ridicule or make fun of someone or a group of people, you're saying, ah, they're all weak, they're stupid, they're all lazy, they're all criminals, they're all fanatical. It works because it comes against our self-value. Here's, here's what happened in the story, Nehemiah 4. When Sanballat, this is an enemy, an opposition person, 
heard that they were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews. And in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, what are those feeble Jews doing? Will they really restore the wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble, burned as they are? Tobiah, an Ammonite, who was at his side, said, what are they building? Even if a fox was climbing up on it, it would break down their wall of stones. So, important note, Sanballat is not to be mistaken with Sandlot. You remember that epic movie, great, great movie. Although I think we can understand there was something similar going on. Remember that ragtag bunch of youngsters who were playing baseball, right? They had, their names were, were like Squints and Smalls and Ham and Yeah Yeah and Repeat. And then they had their rival team, the Tigers. They were the official Little League team, right? And the Tigers would ridicule them and mock them. They didn't want the Sandlot troop to get good, to be good. They learned their lesson, though. Well, this is what Nehemiah was facing. They're getting ready to build something up, and the opposition began to ridicule them to try to take out the wind in their sails. It still happens. One person says something about somebody, and then all of a sudden, somebody else, like, like Sam Ballot had a Tobiah. It could be on a social media post. Somebody says, ah, oh, yeah, they're this, or this group of people are this way, or this person's this way. And then all of a sudden, all these other people start chiming in, right? And posting their stuff, and it, and it grows. That's what, that's what th this happens when we ridicule. It grows, and other people comes in, and it, it, it's every day. And as you know, it's tiring and exhausting. Listen, if you are out to serve, and you are out to build, and to, to make something happen, to bring about change, understand there will be those in opposition who ridicule your, your, even your effort at it. Okay, here's another tactic of opposition, and that's resistance. These are purposeful actions to stir up trouble and to start a fight. I mean, how many of you know people like this? It's like they live just to be against something. They're just, they're ready, they're postured almost just to fight. You say this, they wanna come this. You wanna do this, they wanna bring this. It's just that opposition, it's a, man, it's, 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 it's dark, it's not good. Don't text somebody and tell them they need to watch this message right now, by the way. Let's just own our own. Let's keep reading. Nehemiah 4, 6, 8. This is where it continues. It says, So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height. For the people worked with all their heart. But when Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the people of Ashdod heard that the repairs to Jerusalem walls had gone ahead and that the gaps were being closed, they were very angry. They plotted to come against us or they plotted to come together and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. So now we see that the opposition is getting organized. And you'll notice this too. It's not just ridicule. It's not just two or three. They're getting other formidable foes in with them on this thing. Here's the truth. Negative people tend to gravitate, gravitate together. They begin to fuel each other's fire. And now it's, well, we've got this person, this person, and this person. And they gather like that. That's how opposition works. They want you to feel small. They want you to feel inadequate. They want you to feel outnumbered. They'll ridicule, and they'll be in resistance. And here's the third tactic, and you know this one, unfortunately, and that's rumors. The quickest way to, to spread a rumor is to feed on people's fears. It's the most popular tactic in politics right now. He's a socialist. He's a racist. They're all crooks. They're all heartless. It's playing on people's fears constantly. This is what Sand Ballot and his cohorts did. You can read it. They begin to ridicule. They begin to resist and then they begin to threaten, and, and they, they spread these rumors in the camp, and the people in the camp are hearing them now. And the rumors, like all rumors, they get exaggerated until it becomes so much bigger than life, right? And then there's something that happens when we listen to that, and that's what I want to talk about right now, the effect of opposition. When these things come on your life, here's the effect, the effect of opposition. Nehemiah 4, 10 through 11, then the people of Judah began to complain. The workers are getting tired. There's so much rubble to be moved. We will never be able to build the wall by ourselves. Meanwhile, our enemies were saying, before they know what's happening, we will swoop down on them and kill them and end their work. Now here, grab this, just remember this. This is the intention of opposition. 
Opposition. Remember, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, so don't be thinking about just that coworker or that person or that neighbor, or whatever. It's not flesh and blood, it's the spirit behind it. There is an enemy of your soul who is your opposition, who will use people and things and circumstances to come at you with this intention. And the intention is discouragement, to discourage you. When you are working hard to make a difference, when you're working hard to bring a change, you know this, even in your own life. When you're working hard to promote something and to go and make, make yourself and make others better, you're going to face opposition. Opposition is going to come, and it's a goal, is to discourage you. And it will if we let that voice be louder than the voice of God's truth in our hearts and in our minds. So this is actually what happened to the people of Jerusalem. And don't miss out. I don't know if you caught it when we, when we were reading it right there. Uh, on when this usually happens. You can write this in if you're taking notes. When does this usually occur in a project? You're building this project, you're making this move, you're doing this change, about the halfway point. About the halfway point. How many of us have, you know, halfway finished projects around the house? I do. <laughs> I do still. I keep saying, okay, tomorrow, or we'll get to it this week or next week. We do. Why? Because it's the, the last part's the hardest part. Finishing is the hardest part. And so here they, here they are, and there's, there's four causes that we see here in the Scripture. There's more, but there's four that we see here in the Scripture that are bringing discouragement their, their way. See if you can relate to any of these. First one, it says they were getting tired, and so that equals fatigue. Because change is hard, right? Making a difference isn't easy. Serving others can be taxing, and we can get just tired of doing what's right and trying to, to do right and behave right. That's why the scripture says, don't grow weary in your well-doing, for in due season you will reap. Boy, it's, it's staying with it till that in due season part. So one is fatigue. Another one is when they said there's so much rubble, which is frustration. You ever feel that? The opposition comes in, you just get frustrated. It's a matter of perspective. When we let the voice of opposition become greater than the voice of God in our hearts, the voice of our will to see change, that voice that is championing us on to make a difference and do it. When the voice of opposition is louder than that will and that desire to move forward, we can just get frustrated with this. I mean, these people building these walls, they were halfway done. I mean, that's an accomplishment. They, they were halfway done. And that's why opposition came so strong is because the opposing forces, these Dark forces were seeing, oh, they're doing it. Look, I, when you're making progress in whatever area of your life, even in your family, when you're making progress in your spiritual well-being and it's going, all of a sudden the enemy just wants you to think about what you haven't done yet, what all there is still to do. And you forget, look where I've come. There, there's been accomplishment going on. And that accomplishment halfway should motivate us to keep moving forward. All right, here's another cause. They said, we will never be able to build the wall. This is that fear of failure, right? Failure. You know, there were actually two failed attempts to build these walls before Nehemiah ever showed up. And so, you know, they were spreading rumors about, hey, you're not going to be able to build it. How are we going to be able to build it? We failed in the past. You ever feel that way? That enemy's voice coming and say, you failed in the past. You're not going to be able to do it. You've tried before. Others have tried. What are you thinking? And failure can bring discouragement, even past failures. And we all have them. But we don't want to let those determine uh, the progress that we're going to make in the future. The last one is when they said our enemies will attack us. And that's fear. That's just fear that, you know, I'm going to be a laughingstock. This won't work. Fear takes control. It gets wedged in us, in all of us. But it takes control when we meditate on the fear. Right? That's why the scripture says we need to cast down every thought that exalts itself over the knowledge of God. When fear comes in and oh, I'm not going to be able to do this or I'll fail if I try or whatever else, man, we're all but ruined at that point. That's when we need to stop and we need to regather ourselves in God. So that's what I really want to talk about for this last part is how do we get out of discouragement? How do we overcome opposition? Because we all face it. We all face it. We all deal with it. What do we do about it? Because I don't want to just meditate on it, right, and commiserate and talk with other people and make it worse. 
I want to get through it. First off is this. I'm going to give you the right responses to opposition. And the first one, it's going to sound a little funny at first, but it's respect the opposition. That doesn't mean respect the, 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 the negative part. It doesn't mean respect, live in fear of it. That just means understand that this is for real. Those opposing forces that come against you, that's, that's enemy of your soul who wants to stop the good work that you're doing, that you've been wanting to build that ministry, even have a prayer life, read the Bible. The enemy who wants to stop that, that's very real. The battle is real. I love what Nehemiah did in the face of his opposition. Look at this. Nehemiah 4, 8 through 9 says, They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem, right? Those enemies. And stir up trouble against it. But we prayed to our God and posted a guard day and night to meet his threat. I love that. They prayed and they posted a guard. Prayer is the divine part. We trust God. We pray. Posting a guard, that was them taking responsibility. There's both. They were praying and they took responsibility. They posted a guard as well as were prayed up. We have our part to do in this as well. It's one thing to lay down in your bed at night and say, God, protect me from the burglars. It's another thing to get up and lock the door. Right? So we have our part to do. Here's the principle. This is the principle we learn here. Jesus' people do the prayerful and the practical. Prayerful and the practical. We rely on God. The battle is his. We rely on him. We are prayed up, but we are also prepared. We've done the practical. We are prayed up and we are prepped. We understand the battle is real, and we have our part to do in overcoming that opposition. And another thing we must do when we're facing opposition is reinforce your weak points. I'm going to say that again. Reinforce your weak points. Do you know what the vulnerable parts or the weak points are in your business? Do you know what they are in your family? Do you know what they are in your personal life? Where are you most susceptible to an attack? Is it your low self-confidence? Is it pride? Is it lust? Is it greed? Is it caring too much about what people think? Where are you vulnerable? Just take inventory of yourself. Know that. We need to know our weak points. Good leaders, good people, know where they are vulnerable. Know where they are weak. And they reinforce that area. This is what Nehemiah did. Look at this. He said, therefore, verse 13, I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, spears, and bows. Nehemiah knew the weak points. Strong leaders, strong people know their weaknesses. They are very self-aware. This can be as simple as, in order to reinforce this, telling, making sure your spouse knows about your weaknesses. That maybe there's some friends in your life that you can be open with. To go to a counselor, to see a therapist, whatever it is, at somebody or at least some people, they know the areas. You are, you are reinforcing those areas where you have gaps, where you have areas of vulnerability in your life so that other people can keep you accountable and they can keep you encouraged. Anytime, anytime you're in the process of building something up, again, your marriage, your ministry, your career, your faith, you're, you're wanting to bring change in your life, when you do, resistance is going to come your way. And so you want to you be prayed up, you want to be prepared, you want to reinforce those areas in your life. And here's another important key. Jesus' people build and they battle at the same time. You keep building and you battle at the same time. You remember uh, back last week in the scriptures that talked about uh, how they had their, their tools to work with in one hand and they had their sword in the other hand. It's such a great picture of a Jesus follower. Saying, you know what, I want to see this change happen in my life. I want freedom in this area of my life. I want to see this ministry happen. I want to start a growth group. I want to read through the Bible. I want, to, I want to do whatever. And as you move forward and you're building, you get ready. You have those tools to help you build and you're prepared. You're going forward. But have a sword. You're ready because the enemy of your soul does not like your intention to advance. And he will come after you. Here's the, here's the important principle in facing opposition. Write this down. Remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. Kind of sounds like a duh. 
but it's not. It's a, it's a truth you have to remind yourself is, is that who is fighting with you and who is fighting for you? That is God. God fights our battles. He does. He doesn't just say good luck. He fights our battles with us. And I'll tell you what, I have faced, as far as battles go, I have faced some doozies in my life. Doozies is a Greek word for bada beings, thingamajigs, biggins. <laughs> I have faced some in my life. And boy, I have not always fought right. That's for, that's for certain. But I know that the Lord has spoken to my heart many times. I can think of a few times in particular right now as I'm just even sharing this where he spoke to me and said, you have a choice here, son. You do the fighting or you let me do it. Meaning you defend yourself or you let me defend you. If you, if you are going to just, you know, fight your own battles without God, you're going you're gonna to give tit for tat. They're going to hurt you, you're going to hurt them back. You're going to go into that. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not carnal. They're not of this world. They're not fleshly. It's not, well, you disrespected me. I'm going to disrespect you. Or you hurt me. I'm going to hurt you. You spread a rumor about me. See what I spread about you. You are mean to me. I'm going to be mean to you. No, no. The Jesus people, he says, we bless those who curse. We pray for those who spitefully misuse. How, how do you do that? How can we get ourselves in a place to do that? Understanding that God's got you. As you lean into him, he'll fight your battles. And then you don't have to. You fight against the enemy. You fight that battle in your mind to pull down the fear and those strongholds and to bring up truth, but you let God deal with the opposition. Here's the principle. Jesus' people don't take it out on others. They take it to God. We're not taking it out on others. We need to rise, especially in the climate that we are in right now in our, in our time. Uh, leading up to this election, just the, the, the polarization of parties and opinions and social issues and the COVID and everything right now, it's a, it's a clarion call from God, from the Holy Spirit saying, come on, church people, let's rise up. Let's be different. Let's behave different. Say, Mark, it's too hard. I know it's hard. Every one of us, we have flesh and blood and souls and minds and, and tempers and, and opinions and all these. Of course it's hard. How do we do it? We remember God. We lean into God. In our weakness, he is made strong. We understand that the battle is not against that group or that person. There's an enemy behind these things. And we fight our battles by trusting in him and relying on him and saying, God, you give me your mind today as I go about my day. I got, I got my tools that I'm working with as I'm building this, and I've got my sword. Here's the last way to overcome opposition. I love this one. Are you ready? Refuse to quit. Refuse to quit. A few weeks ago, I was talking to a, a friend of mine who was doing his ministry, and um, he was getting some attack from some people, you know, which we always do. And he was getting these attacks, and it was discouraging him. And I told him this. I, I, I told him, I said, I'll tell you what. This is what I know. And we all got places we need to change, but I told him, this is what I know. I like the way you're doing it better than the way they're not doing it. You, you, you go. You keep moving. You refuse to quit. I wanted to encourage him with that. When you feel like giving up, when you feel like giving up on your personal health, your spiritual development, your kids, your marriage, that ministry, when you feel like quitting, here's a key. Just don't. Don't. Just keep moving forward. That's what Nehemiah did. That's what, when, when Sanballat and Tobiah and all those negative crew came at him, the wall, at this point in the story, it's now done, but they haven't finished the gates. And at a last desperate attempt, his enemies send a request saying, hey, come on down off that wall. We want to meet with you. But he knew it was an attack. And he, and he couldn't quit. Watch this. I love this. Nehemiah 6, 2 through 3. But they were planning to harm me. And so I sent messengers to them with this answer. I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. I don't want the work to stop while I leave to meet you. What a great moment in this story. He's up there. He's about to the finish line. The enemy sees that trying to come at him. They say, hey, why don't you come on down? Let, let's talk about this. Let's do this. And he says, I cannot come down. I am doing a great work. I'm about something that's worth it, and I cannot come down. This is how you respond when the opposition comes to you. 
Because the last thing the enemy of your soul wants to see is you succeed. What God wants is to see you succeed. To see you be that change inside and create change in culture. To see your marriage work. To see your health flourish. To, to see these advancements. And so when the enemy tries to get you to quit and to come down and to distract and everything else, whatever, you need to say the same thing. I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. <laughs> you tell the enemy that. I'm sorry. I'm doing something that matters. I'm trying to save my marriage. I'm doing something that matters. I'm trying to get out of debt. I'm doing something that matters. I'm spending time every day in the Bible, in reading and prayer. I'm ready to become a new man or a new woman. I'm doing something that matters. I'm opening my home for people to come so I can share the gospel. I'm doing something that matters and I cannot come down. That's tenacity right there. Man, I think, you know, there's another scripture. It's coming to me right now. Where it says, uh, the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro across the earth looking for him whose heart is loyal to him. Who's got that voice. Sorry, cannot. There's a great work and it demands my diligence right now. I, uh, I remember reading something in devotional long ago, years ago, and it said it like this. It said, leave the vain things to the vain and the petty to the petty. You pursue nobler appetites. And I went, man, that's true. There's always going to be the, the petty and the vain and the stuff and the talk and this and the chatter and the, and the attacks, and they're all going to come. Look, leave it. Pursue nobler appetites. If you failed, get up. If you need to repent, repent. But be about your father's business because he is for you. He's invested in your victory. He's invested in your freedom. So don't let any demon, don't let any voice of hell, don't let anything distract you from that. You stay on that wall and you build until it's complete, until you got your victory. All right, I want to end by reading this passage. Nehemiah 6.15, the wall of Jerusalem was completed on the 20th. 25th day of the month of Elil, it took 52 days to rebuild. When all our enemies heard about it and all the nations around us saw it, they were ashamed. And then they understood that the work had been done with the help of our God. Nehemiah completed in 52 days what they couldn't do in 141 years. Why? Because he had a mission from God. Oh, he was discouraged. Guarantee he felt like quitting. He, had, he was tired of even trying to encourage the other people around. But he continued at it. Why? Because God had promised him a victory. He sent him to do this. And the, and the scriptures teach when the word of God does not return unaccomplished. It prospers in the thing for which it was sent. His word for you, for me, is freedom. Is, is victory. Is health. Is wholeness. Is happiness. Is all this. Don't stop that pursuit. You know? Uh, the psalmist said, I would have lost heart, but I believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The Apostle Paul said, there's one thing I do, I press on, I keep moving. Discouragement? Absolutely it comes. That means you're making progress when these forces come against you. Some of you like halfway there. You've seen, you're not where you were, you're not where you want to be, and there's been discouragement right now. I get that. Press on. Press on. Get tools. Work yourself. Prepare. Guard your weaknesses, but be prayed up and move forward. God and you are a majority. And I want to pray for you right now this morning. Father, we thank you that you are perpetually for us, that you have promised to fight our battles. Help us to lean into that. Help us not to uh, exchange insult for insult and fight for fight and slander for slander, Lord. That we don't take it out on others, Lord, but we take it to you, God. And then we trust you for the victory. I pray people would see that in their lives this week as they continue to move forward. And we'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, everyone. We're back. We want to share a couple things with you before we jump into our final song of worship. You heard Pastor Mark talk about the 10-week challenge during his message today. And we want to make sure and encourage you guys that if you're not already signed up for it, that you make sure you get signed up for that as well. And if you're not signed up as of yet, let's take a few seconds and get signed up together. In order to sign up, go to venice.church slash with, or go to the Eastlake Church app, go to the Venice Church location, and you can sign up there. Two challenges that we're gonna be starting with this week are service projects and our Stronger Together boxes. 
These Stronger Together boxes are gonna give you an opportunity to serve the city and the community and also those that are closest to you. But first, let's talk about service projects. You wanna tell them about it, Phil? Yeah, why don't, I, why don't I tell them about it? Okay. But first, I would like to tell you about Nikki. Now, Nikki is a member of our church network, and a few years ago, her women's group saw a need in our community and came together to bring a solution. Um, I really love this story. They are amazing, and I really want you to see it. Check it out. Five years ago, my women's group, we decided that we wanted to do a service project. We wanted to help our community. And we heard about the San Jacinto School District. Um, they housed the largest population of homeless children, and they were having a backpack drive. And so we decided that we were going to donate 100 backpacks filled with supplies. And so we actually ended up having um, garage sales. We were able to meet that need, um, and we actually went to the event and got the opportunity to hand out the backpacks to the kids. So we were handing out the backpacks and I saw this little girl, she was about 10 years old, and she was alone. And it turned out that her mom was working and her siblings were asleep. And so she walked there to get her backpack. I ended up giving her a ride home because she stayed until the end. And I remember driving so far and um, just thinking, here is this 10-year-old girl that needed school supplies, got herself up, walked herself there, and, and got what she needed. She's the reason why we continue to do it every year. And so the next year we decided we're gonna do 200 backpacks and um, raise the bar, and God showed up, and we were able to meet that need. And so year three, we decided that this year we're gonna do 500 backpacks. If God puts something on your heart, um, no matter how big it is, that He will show up. But what it took was for us to take that first step, and then the next step after, and the next step after. I am so incredibly proud of our group. Each one of us are so unique um, in our personalities, and our giftings, and just to be able to just bring it all together. Now, if there's anybody out there thinking about serving the community. If God has placed it on your heart, I am here to tell you that if He's placed it on your heart, He's giving you the skills and the ability to do it. And when we first started, it was it was nervous. We were nervous. We were scared. It was, it was a lot of work. But it took just taking that first step. And I would encourage you, if you have it on your heart, if God has placed it there, He will provide. Just take that next step. How cool was that? All right, this year, we have a couple of different ways that you can help serve with us. We have a couple of service projects that we're leading. All you have to do is sign up and attend, real easy. There's also an option for you to design your own service project, and then you can get some people with you so you can make that happen as well. That's called the Create Your Own. If you've already signed up for the 10-week challenge, you've probably received all of this information via email. But if you're still trying to figure out what projects, what service you can be a part of, all you have to do is go check out withvenice.com. Another wonderful way you can get involved with the 10 week challenge are the Stronger Together boxes. Now these are boxes that you can pick up and give to a family or friend who's close but doesn't attend our church necessarily. Um, these boxes are meant to be an encouragement to those that we give them to, letting them know that we're all stronger together. Guess that's why they call it the Stronger Together box. You think? <laughs> so what's in the box? Well, let's see what we got here. The box looks like this, and when you open up the box, you'll notice that it's about partially full. And we've put some items in there for you to check out. So let's see what we got in here. Uh, sanitizer. Ooh, squirt, squirt. Stronger together mask. Perfect for uh, COVID safety. Magnet. Magnet. No, that didn't work. Thanks. All right, and then we also have a flyer who, <laughs> with the picture of this dude on here, I, I don't know who he is, but he must be someone important because he's on the flyer. So we've got that in there for you as well. Uh, and then the other half of the box is for you to fill with items that you know the person that you're giving it to you would enjoy. Maybe some candy, maybe something for their kids. Maybe some coffee. Maybe some coffee. 
Whatever it is, make it personal and meaningful to the person that you're giving it to. Uh, add the contents to the box and then give it to them within the next couple of weeks. If you're already signed up for tonight's in-person service, which is going to be amazing, I think. I think so. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> you're going to be able to pick up your boxes then. But if you weren't able to make it tonight, there's going to be a couple more opportunities for you to be able to pick up these boxes. You'll be able to drop by, say hi to Pastor Mark and Marianelle, and pick up your boxes. And those opportunities are going to be October 8th, Thursday, October 8th, from 5 to 7 p.m. and Saturday, October 10th, from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Make sure you get your box and you have a lot of fun giving them away. All of these things that we're able to do, the service projects, the serving our community, feeding the homeless, feeding all these people in our community are all a result of your generosity. So we want to thank you so very much for your giving. Even as we're able to start meeting in person again soon, we're definitely not going to be giving up these opportunities to be uh, lights in our community. We have to continue doing this. It's all important. It's our way of moving God's kingdom forward. Yes, thank you so much for that. If you are able to give today through the church, please text GENEROSITY to 67076 or go to venice.church slash give. One last thing that we're gonna cover before we jump back into our last worship song, October 23rd and 24th, which is a Friday night and a Saturday morning, we're gonna be hosting a marriage seminar here at Venice Church. You'll be able to sign up for that next Sunday. Kevin and Patrice McPeak are gonna, great friends of mine, they're gonna be coming in. They've got some great information, some great messages for married couples, and they're gonna be sharing that information with us over the course of that seminar. So make sure you get signed up next week. It's gonna be great for you married couples. I'll be praying for you, man. That's uh, all I can say. <laughs> you should, <laughs> you really should. Um, all right, now this song is called You Keep Hope Alive, and it's one we learned last week. Now this song is about Jesus keeping hope alive, no matter what you're going through. I encourage you to really listen to what this song says and have this be a prayer for all of us today. darkest but your light is greater you light away God you light away when evil is rising you're rising higher with power to save with power to save you keep hope alive you keep hope alive the beginning to end your word never fails you keep hope alive because you are alive jesus you are alive death had a stronghold your life was stronger rose from the grave rose up from the grave is rising, you're rising higher, with power to stay, with power to stay, oh, oh, yeah. you keep hope alive, you keep hope alive, from the beginning to end, your word never fails, you keep hope alive, because you are sorrow there's so for this moment my hope for tomorrow there's so in the morning there's so in the evening there's so cause you're living there's so cause you're breathing there's so in the breaking there's so in the sorrow there's so for this moment my Keep 
Jesus, you are alive.